Okay, so now we're going to go over three different shapes of cat skull. The three different shapes are considered to be oriental, classic, and round. On the screen now is a display of what is considered to be a classic cat skull. Do you notice the bridge in the nose here? We do have the dip in the eye around the eye socket, the ridge around the uh, orbital socket, and the proportion between the high cheekbone and the orbital socket and the side of the skull to the height of the skull, and then you've got the distance between the two canines. Okay. This is another classic cat skull, and again, you have the ridge here where the nasal cavity is, and this is all filled in with cartilage. You do have a dip between the nasal bridge and where we're getting into the eye socket, and there is a shadow that comes in here, but this area here quite typically flat when you're looking at illustrating a cat. Um, typical cat skulls like this, again, classic cat skull, um, you're looking at an American short hair, a Tonkinese, an Egyptian male, or a Japanese bobtail. Getting into the muscle features when we're talking about cats, um, we do have to take in mind that the way that the muscles go within the face in proportion to the skull. Another example, and on this one it's a lion, um, you do have these muscles here, and when a cat snarls, these are the muscles that contract. They cause folds within the skin, but here on the bridge of the nose, you don't have a whole lot of muscles. There is some amount of tendon there, but we're not looking at a lot of muscle mass that would cause a lot of, of shape difference. Top view of the skull, again on this display, it's a lion. A couple of features I want to point out is you do have that pronounced ridge bone here where the, the nasal bone is and how the muscles come down on the side of the muzzle versus right down to the nose and this cartilage here is generally flat. In this illustration you do have um, the lion uh, snarling, pulling its lips back and here's where you have that rippling effect because these muscles here are contracting. Okay. So having an awareness of what the anatomy is in a, of these cats is usually very, very helpful in trying to figure out when you have a blurry picture, when you have a bad reference picture, when you're trying to create a, a certain effect and you don't have that within your own images, um, how those muscles work. This is the a example of a Persian cat skull, obviously by its label. Um, what you're going to no uh, notice first here is that the size of the orbital socket here is much larger in proportion to the muzzle. The muzzle itself is quite a bit shorter. And the overall length of the skull is rather short in comparison to its width. The overall effect when this cat is alive, it's fully fleshed out, is it gives it a very round appearance. A lot of cats with this round skull type often have a breed standard of very round or stocky ears. They're very close to the head. Um, the other thing that's huge to tell between uh, this Persian cat skull and that of this cat skull is here, while there is a small minute dip between the nasal bridge and then you have the dip here where you have some muscle buildup between the maxilla where the holds the canine and underneath the uh, cheekbone and oops too far um, here is that here because it is much shorter there is less room and so this becomes quite dipped and can become quite bulgy um, in some cats, this muzzle here is actually non-existent, which is where you get cats that have breathing problems, um, and you get um, birth defects, uh, the bulging of the eyes, um, distortions, wrinkles, 
and some traits that are considered undesirable by cat breeders. The entire purpose behind breeding a cat like that, the overall effect makes the whole facial feature much more centered. Uh, when these eyes are placed within the skull, it brings the nose and the eyes quite close to each other, and when drawing out these animals, uh, you'll find it quite easy to find that uh, the eyes, um, when placing your line across and down the bridge of the face, uh, y your eyes and nose will actually intersect on the same plane. Here's an illustration of this. This is another picture I pulled off the web. And again, you've got that really round looking body shape, really round looking body facial structure, large looking eyes, and this cat's a little, you know, it's a little chubbier throughout the cheekbones, um, but you've got that sort of wrinkling here in the face, and when you go down across the face here, you're actually coming up to the leather of the nose. Everything is very, very centered within the face, pushing the actual outside of the head structure quite far away. Closer view of a cat's face, and I, I find a lot of artists have problems illustrating it when it comes to depth perception within a cat's face. They're not quite sure how to illustrate the highlights where uh, the strengths are in the cat's face. In this case, because it is a short haired cat, uh, you do have this hard part, like I talked about earlier, where the cartilage is on the nose, and because this is a shorter faced cat, this is the predominantly highlighted part of the face, and then it does dip in here because the orbital socket here actually pronounces a ridge here. Where it's a longer classic skull, you'll have the ridge here that comes down around the eyes. Again, the highlight on the nose, the ridge on the eye coming down as a shadow, but primarily right here is where you're looking at a highlight. Um, this is an exotic short hair. A very pushed in face, round face by all means, and this is exactly where I'm talking about where we're looking at the, the pushed in nose coming in line with the eyes. Um, ears are very far back in the head, the ears are very rounded, it's a very, very round shaped skull. This is actually a breeding desired uh, look, and, and that what, that's what can get a lot of artists a little confused. Another exotic short hair, again, the eyes come right in line with the nose, and here you have that wrinkled effect where uh, you have a lot of um, material and skin and, and flesh building up along the muzzle, and it can get very confusing for an artist to figure out where the bridge of the muzzle is, um, how to highlight this so it all looks like it's anatomically correct. This is an example of an exotic or a oriental head shape. A much longer head shape, the muzzle is quite a bit longer. The eyes look really big, not so much because they're disproportionately bred, but because the length of the skull is so much more narrow, uh, it, it longer and more narrow, it makes these eyes look much bigger. On the oriental breeds, it's much more uh, desired to have that really large looking ear appearance. Side view of that skull, really, really long skull as far as where the brain cavity is and where it sits on the, on, you know, it connects with the um, spine. Uh, really long flat face. And if you go between the side view and the front view, you can see this is quite a much more narrow build than that of the round skull, which makes the eyes look bigger in the head. It's not necessarily that they are uh, but there's less flesh here and less fur here in order to make this cat look more filled out. Very round, uh, long, tapered face, large ears, makes the eyes have a larger appearance. When you're talking about how this fills into and translates into flesh, this is your typical cat. This is actually a uh, Japanese bobtail. Classic uh, head build so your eyes are quite filled out in proportion to the cheekbones and the muzzle. The muzzle is not in line at all with it with the, the nose is not in line at all with the eyes. Uh, the ears are quite set back but are proportionate to the skull. They don't look overly big. 
everything looks quite proportionate compared to that of maybe an oriental or a Persian. This is a side view of an exotic. Um, here you have uh, that really kind of almost Rome, Roman nose, a longer face, and you could see where here you have very much an egg shape when you're talking about um, the shape of the skull. Um, here you go. You could you could start by making that very egg shape. Yours are really very you know large compared to the size of compared to a classic uh, cat. Uh, the eyes look much bigger in the skull because the skull is much more narrow. There is not a large buildup in the cheekbones or in the muzzle. The muzzle is a lot longer, closer to that of like a wild cat. When you're talking short breeds, again, here you have that nose right in line with the eyes. You've got folds within the face, uh, eyes in line with the nose, uh, lots of folds of material here. This material here uh, on top of the nose, still cartilage, still not a lot of movement in here, but you still have a lot of soft tissue here on the top of the face that causes it to wrinkle up. This one is a little bit less, push, uh, less pushed in. Still the really, really big eyes, eye, ears set way back on the head, still the very round ears, big eyes, nose in line with the eyes, with you know, that very soft, fluffy appearance. Here's an example of what can happen in certain breeding lines where you have a very pushed in face, you have breathing problems within the cat because this nasal, ca nasal cavity isn't quite as big as it should be. I've heard in breeding lineages where the eyes are, this eye line is actually turned out a bit, the tear ducts don't drain correctly, or in some case I've even heard of them missing. Um, this nose is very pushed up versus a classic cat where this might be a little wider 